it's time. It's time. And now, it's time for Herman and Sharon. I love you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, everybody. And we appreciate it. Uh, we have a great guy yes, with us today. Yes, we do. We do. It, his name is, and I hope I don't murder it, Chris Valentin. Pretty close, huh? Yes. He's a senior associate leader at Bethel Church in Redding, California. What he, a beautiful place. He is, really. He's the co-founder and overseer of Bethel School. He's developed a restoration program for juvenile delinquents, which has won community awards, two of them, in wow. fact. He is really a guy with a passion. And this book is so mm -hmm. good, so revealing. You know what I just noticed up here? Can you, can you get up there, that, that heart at the top? Can you see that? He's, he's coming in close. See that heart at the top? It, it's an open heart. Mm -hmm. Isn't that neat? We all need open hearts. <laughs> That's all right. I like that. Let's go meet him. All right, we'll do that. He's sitting nice right over guy, here. Too. He is. <laughs> Good to have you. It's Good great to be here. Chris. Thank you very much. Yes. You, you, you say, I wrote this book to be a catalyst for a sexual reformation. That's right. Now, what are you saying, man? <laughs> Here we go, huh? Yeah. You know, in the 60s, we had, that, we had a sexual revolution, didn't we? Mm -hmm. It wasn't a positive sexual revolution, but in my mind, it was a reaction to the Victorian um, religious spirit that, the, that was propagated mostly by the church. Now, explain religious spirit, because, you know, we have people that pop, because we're on satellites. Totally. And they pop in and they go, what was that? What is he talking about? It sounds like church speak. So sometimes, you know, if, if we could get away from all that church speak. Yeah, totally. I mean, I have people on all the time and they're saying those words and I'm sitting here and it goes in my head like, the person watching, if they aren't a church person, have no idea what that meant. Yeah, when I talk about a religious spirit, I'm talking about man's ability to try to reach out to God. You know, I, I think that we, we want to see the kingdom of God. You know, Jesus told us to pray this way, that the kingdom would come and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So we're praying for the kingdom to come. But there is, there is a, um, a counterfeit kingdom, if you will. Yeah. And that kingdom, in my mind, is a religious spirit where people perform acts. They try to be righteous by their own. You know, it's like Judas. Judas, Judas when, he, when he, you know, two people denied Christ, Peter and Judas. But Judas created his own redemption by hanging himself. Wow. And religion is that, is that in my mind, is that thing that makes us want to, you know, we, you know, read your Bible, go to church, do all the right stuff, but instead of working for love, instead of working from love, we're working for love. And religion can never be satisfied. You know, if you read for 10 minutes, it should have been 20. Well, you're right. if, you, if, you, if you go to church... If you witness to one, you should have witnessed to the whole it's, world. It's never satisfied. Yeah. And in my mind, religion is the strongest evil spirit in the world. You know, Jesus said, if you cast out a spirit, seven spirits more evil than the first will return. And in my mind, you know, it wasn't the murder spirit, it wasn't the pornography, it wasn't homosexuality that put Jesus on the cross. It was a religious spirit. And so I, I believe that a religious spirit is the strongest spirit in, uh, released in our world today. But you're not saying there's nothing wrong with all those things you just said. No, no. Because yeah, you, you talk about those in the book. <laughs> I'm a pastor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you know, reading your Bible, uh, um, going to church, you know, uh, giving, being generous. Uh, uh, praying, all those things, they're all part of having a relationship with God. Mm -hmm. But the deal is, is that you can, if, if those things gave you a relationship with God in themselves, then the Pharisees would have rocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, yeah. so mm -hmm. the, yeah. the adulteress had a relationship with God. Yeah. The sinner had a relationship with God. And the person who knew the Bible, who prayed every day, who fasted, who did all the right stuff, didn't know Jesus when he was standing right in front of him. And, and with him all the time. And with him all the time. So we have to be careful that we don't perform for love, yeah. that we're performing from love. Tell me about the parable of the ring. That, uh oh. Uh, and, and set that up, how it all happened. <laughs> well, let me tell you, I was dealing with, I had some pro pro probation kids. I had some kids on probation. Um, I was working with the probation department. They had 35 kids, 37 kids. And they said, listen, we're going to do a thing for the parents and we're going to teach, we're going to, we're going to take these troubled kids and we're going to work with their parents, mostly single parents. And would you do something with the kids one couple times a week? 
So I started working with these probation kids. None of them were believers. And on the, on the way to the gym, they gave me this old gym. They hadn't used it in 20 years. We literally swept out the dirt in this small town, about 900 people, the armpit of Trinity County. Huh. We swept out the gym. We played basketball there. And then at halftime, I spoke to them. We had a halftime, and I would speak to them. And, uh, and then we'd play basketball or volleyball again. And the very, first, the very first time, I'm on my way to the gym. It's about a 15, 20-minute drive. And the Lord gives me this, this parable, the parable of this ring. And he starts... You mean cold? Just, he gave it to me in 20 seconds. In 20 seconds, he gives me the first chapter of this book, actually. That was more than 15 and years ago. And I mean, ago. this is detail, man. Yeah. Okay, now you've got, you got, you got to give that story. I can't imagine kids on probation <laughs> sitting, mm -hmm. hearing this and responding the way you said they did. Yeah, we're sitting there, and I'm telling this story, and the Lord gives me this, the, the ring. Basically, the, the, the just of the story is that this guy gets, buys this ring, and he's in high school, and he works all through high school to buy this ring, and he, he sees it in a jewelry store, and of course I go through this whole, you know, dramatizing okay, it. Okay, now, you've you got to walk through it with us. Okay, don't, don't shortcut it. You don't want me to shortcut no, the no. story. Um, well, I mean, you don't have to get real detail. But, but what, because I'm a jewelry nut. Got okay? it. And that's why it really picked up. And he's, he's going past this jewelry store, and it's like this, this ring that had this unbelievable diamond, which only diamonds when they're, when they're correct, perfect. Ping! Have you ever seen it on TV where they'll, they'll do that little star ping? That's right. That's what it apparently did to him. Exactly. And he stops, and, you know, he's 15 years old. He stops in the, in the window of the jewelry store, and he begins to peer into this diamond. And when he peers into this diamond, he sees the woman of his dreams. And he begins to, dream, he begins to imagine the woman of his dreams. At now, 15. At 15. Now, he's never dated. He's, you know, he's, he's a virgin. But he begins to dream. He begins to envision the woman of his dreams. And so day after day, he walks by that jewelry store. And one day, he gets the courage to walk in that jewelry store and he asked the, the elderly man behind the counter if he could see the ring. He's nervous. He's sweating. And the, the elderly man's really rude to him. And he says, what, what, do you, what ring are you talking about? And he points to the ring out in the showroom, out in the front window. And so the elderly, the elderly salesman shows him the ring. And, and, uh, and while he's showing him the ring, he, he wants to hold it. And the, the, the salesman says, no, you can't, no, you can't touch it. But as he, as, he, as he peers into the diamond, he begins to see the woman of his dream again. And she begins to appear to him in this vision as he, as he glares into the diamond. And he reaches out, not, not realizing, just being in this, just being mesmerized, he reaches out to, to, to grab the ring. And the man, the, the salesman, says, what are you doing? And he gets so embarrassed, he runs out of the store. And so that's kind of how the story begins. But he comes back. But he comes back. And there is a lady there. That's right. Females are always better. <laughs> you know. Yeah, they're always, they, they take care That's of you. That's right. Okay. <laughs> but she was nice. She was nice. And, 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 the fa and, and, and the ring is like valued at, when she told him, ten grand. Ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand dollars. So this wasn't just a, you know, right. cubic zirconium. Yeah. It was a real diamond, ten thousand dollars. That's right. Okay. And so he, she allows him to hold it. To hold the ring and he holds the ring and he's in the jewelry store and again he goes into this kind of you know trance-like state yeah. and he begins to see again the woman of his dream. Yeah. And so he says I have to have this ring. And, and she's knowing the value she, and can you imagine the average adult would go. He's 15. Uh, yeah. 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 yeah no, this, so you you got to be kidding. You're just thinking, wasting my time. This, this kid's crazy. Yeah. But he says I'll buy it. And they go through this whole process, and she finally, he, he finally convinces her to, that he can put it on layaway and that he'll work for it for the, all th through high school. So he does that, and there's a great story about yeah. the, the old salesman, how he relates to him yeah. just rudely in the beginning. But he, he finds a job, and he works all through high school. He doesn't, he doesn't go to dances. Makes his payments on time. He makes his payments on time. He, he works every opportunity he can get because he has to have that ring for the woman of his dreams. And the jewelry store said they had had people do this before. 
and yep. they had never fulfilled their promise. That's right. And on the last week of, his, of high school, right before high school graduation, he makes the final payment, and he gets the, he gets the ring. He buys the ring for the woman of his dreams. Now, he doesn't let his parents know. He doesn't let anybody know that he's got this wedding ring, you know, this woman's yeah. wedding yeah. ring. Yes, $10,000 $10, engagement ring. With no woman. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> only, yeah. you got the this ring, is, but only one This flaw. is a vision. <laughs> That's right. It's like buying a steering wheel for a car yeah. you don't have. And so, he, and so he gets the ring. He doesn't let anybody know he has it. And, uh, and the day he graduates from high school, he gets a draft notice to Vietnam. And so off he goes to Vietnam, and he's like, I'm, I'm taking the ring with me. I, leaving at home. Gets, I'm reading this and I'm going, oh, you know, put it in a lockbox someplace. <laughs> yeah, well, he takes, it to, he takes it to Vietnam, puts it in his locker. Of course, you know, the first day yeah. he's, at, he's there, the sergeant turns the locker over and the ring, you know, it, it's, it, it, it cascades across the floor. And, and he can't go after it. He can't go after it. It's in a sock. He can't go after it, and man, you know that story. That I, I've kind of embellished that story, and and finally he does get the ring. He gets the ring back, and he tapes it inside his helmet, carves a spot inside his helmet. And he duct tapes it inside his helmet so it'll always be with him. And then he finally they ship him out from from boot camp in, into into Vietnam. Combat into combat. Yeah. And he's in the middle of a combat situation. They're they're encircled in three sides, and they they have to run across this uh, this battlefield. And on the way across the battlefield, he loses his helmet, and he has to run back to the field to get the helmet. And the bullets are firing. The bullets are firing. The sergeant's screaming at him, "You crazy, Johnny! You're crazy! Get down! Get down!" And he gets the helmet fine, but when he runs back, he's running back for the for the uh, foxhole, and he gets hit. Yeah. And then, and then they have to uh, obviously medevac him out, and he ends up, you know, in uh, in a, the medevac and mass unit. First thing he asks about is my helmet. He asks about his helmet. First time he wakes up, he asks about his helmet, and he hears this voice behind him, and she, and this woman, this nurse, is standing behind him, and she and he's, "Where's my helmet? Where's my helmet? Where's my helmet?" And she says, "It's right here. The, it's right here." The sergeant said you ran back for it and thought it was really valuable and. He grabs the helmet and he reaches in and he f pulls back the liner and he feels that his ring is still there for the woman of his dreams. And so, the, uh, so he, 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 he thanks the, the nurse, and, but he notices, he recognizes her voice. He recognizes her voice. And uh, the last time he sees her in a vision in the, in the diamond before he gets to Vietnam, he sees this woman in a nurse's outfit. A nurse's uniform. So there he is. He's 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 laying in bed, and she's talking from behind him. She hasn't seen him. He hasn't seen her yet, but he's heard her, and he recognizes her voice. And when she reaches around to give him the helmet, he looks up, and he and he he knows her from somewhere, but he can't remember where. And as, as he begins to, as he begins to to stare at her, he realizes that it's the woman of his dreams that he has seen for four years in, in, in the vision, in the vision when he looks into the diamond. And he has her ring and she don't know it. He has her <laughs> ring and she doesn't know it. And, uh, and her, her name is Maria. Let's fast forward yeah. to they marry. They marry. And they go on their honeymoon. He does, she doesn't know that okay. he has the ring yet. Yeah, they go on their, and, and he, he puts it on her Finger, right? He gives her the ring on their honeymoon night. Yeah. Uh, while they're sitting on the bed before they consummate the marriage. Right. And 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 the next morning, and she's like, "Oh, thank you very much." He doesn't. He, you know, she's kind of she likes it, but she's not like super impressed. Yeah. And here yeah. he is. You know, he's he's, he's given everything. He's for worked this. four yeah. years yeah. for yeah. it. Almost gave his life. Almost gave his life for it. And she's like, "Oh, that's a nice ring. Yeah. Thank you very much, Johnny." And then fast forward, they go swimming. And the she next day, loses it. And, <laughs> and she doesn't, he suggests she take it off. Yep. She said, oh, it'll be all right. She loses it. She loses it in the, in the sea. Yeah. This is a sad story. It is. It's a sad story. And, and it goes on to say this, that she thought that the value, and she tries to convince him her yeah. parents are wealthy. She, she comes from a very wealthy family. And she says, my, she, he's. Oh, he's, we can replace that. He's on the <laughs> sea, he's on the, he's on the shore, just 
in shock. He can't believe that she's lost the ring. And that she thinks that it can be replaced because he's spent his whole life paying for it, almost died for it. But she doesn't know that. But she doesn't know any of that. No, and she says, my parents will buy us another one. He'll buy one. My, my parents will help us buy one just like this. And, and, but she doesn't realize that the value of the ring isn't, is, in, is actually in the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to yeah. get it from the battlefield all the way to the honeymoon suite. Yeah. Wow. She yeah. thinks that the value of the diamond is in the, in the money that it took to buy it. Yeah. She doesn't realize. And it can be replaced. And it can be replaced. Okay. Now, and you told this story. To, to 37, 35, 37 probation kids. And, and they're sitting there with cloudy eyes. They start to cry, and I say, the ring, that ring is your virginity. Mm. And when I say, that ring is your virginity, they start to cry. And they start, one by one, one girl stands up and she says, no one's ever told me this. Mm. No one has ever told me this. My parents told me not to sleep with men, but they never told me why. And, I, and then I began to talk to them and began to tell them the reason why you have a sex drive years before you, God wants you to have sex is so that on your honeymoon night, you have something to give your lover that you had to fight to keep because the value of your virginity is in the blood, sweat, and tears that it took to get it all the way from the battlefield into the bedroom. And that was the first time they had ever heard that. And I'm going to tell you something. I, mm -hmm. think it's a, I think it's the first time that many Christians have ever heard that. Mm -hmm. You know, Christians tell, Christian parents tell their kids, you know, don't have sex, you're going you're gonna to get pregnant. You're going you're gonna, to they don't, they don't, get a disease. You're going to get a disease. Yeah. Something yeah. bad's going to happen to you. They don't realize that the beauty, mm -hmm. the trophy of their virginity the reason why it's so hard to and it keep, can't be replaced can't be replaced it's a one time now you're fighting you realize you're fighting a whole society's ideas that they have now I mean back when I was a teenager yeah we we heard that yeah, in the 50s. you know yeah but I mean now you're going against yeah. everything that these kids are being taught on television in the movies you know that they would be who that nobody cares anymore totally yeah. And you're a square if you haven't had sex. That's exactly. right. You're, you're not, you're not, they look at you like you're weird. And they actually uh, re was receptive to what you just said? They, they were stunned. They were weeping. Not, not one of them, not one of my uh, original kids that were on probation had kept their virginity. And they were stunned, and so we began to talk about the restoration. So you wrapped that story around keeping yourself pure. That's right. Keeping yourself pure for your lover. So you have something to give that, that is valuable. Wow. That story has just caught me. And then tell the story about Jill. Yeah. The most popular girl in school. That was, you know, that was just this amazing. Now, I wasn't a believer in high school. I didn't get saved till I was 18. So I had an encounter with God at 15 where God audibly spoke to me. And he, and he healed my mother. My mother had uh, psoriasis from the top of her head to the bottom of her feet. And I cried out one night and I said to God, if you heal my mother, I'll find out who you are and I'll serve you the rest of my life. And he said, my name is Jesus Christ and you have what you requested in an audible voice. And a week later he came to me again. He said, my name is Jesus Christ. You said that if I healed your mother, you'd serve me and I'm waiting. My mother got completely well. So from the time I was 15 to the time I was 18, I was searching for God. Mm -hmm. And, you know, during the, what we call the Jesus movement now. I didn't know there was a Jesus yeah, movement. Yeah. I didn't know there was any movement. I'd never yeah. been to church. But there was something inside of me. Uh, and there was, there was a gal. Her name was, her name, real name isn't Jill, of course. So, yeah. But, um, but she was the most popular girl in school. And I went to a school that was, that was uh, about one-third African-American and one-third um, Mexican American and one third um, um, Caucasian, and uh, and of course we have the free you know free love and mm -hmm. uh, you know sexual revolution and the drug culture and we've got the civil rights movement and so we have total chaos. And my my school was total chaos. The police were there all the time, and yet and this gal Jill she got along with everybody. 
But the main thing about Jill, she was well-dressed, and she was a virgin, and everybody knew it. And nobody made fun of her because she, she was, I don't know, have you ever met somebody that has so much favor on them? And so I went all through junior high school and high school with her. And one day I'm in the locker room and these two guys are one locker over. And you know how it yeah. echoes in a locker oh, room. Yes. And the one guy says to the other, to the other guy, hey, last night I took, I took Jill to a party, which Jill wasn't a party. Or she got along with all the drug addicts, with all the different racial groups, but she was a, a really pure, amazing woman. It says, I took Jill to a party, and I got her drunk, and I screwed her. Wow. It was more you know, dramatic <laughs> than that, of course. And I was shocked. I, I'm, I'm, I didn't know what to say. I, I, like, I was one locker over from them, and I just, I went home that day, and I, I just fell on my bed, and I just wept. And, and it was crazy. Now, I'm not a Christian. I don't have strong moral values. I, my father drowned when I was three. I'm raised by two stepfathers who didn't like me. I, I mean, I don't, it's something deep. Something was coming from something deep, if that makes sense. Like, you know, something written in your heart. Mm-hmm. And I, I laid on my bed and I wept for Jill. Within about, she was the best dressed girl uh, in our school. Within about probably a month she was wearing old Levi's and a t-shirt which you know that, that outside Chloe doesn't bother but it, it represented it something what it, did. It, it, it changed, changed her it whole attitude. It changed her self-esteem yeah. mm-hmm. and by the time she was uh, a, a senior in high school she was in the drug crowd and mm-hmm. I met her at my 30th uh, um, my 30th uh, class reunion and she had been through three marriages and wow. Uh, had a tough life, and she'd found the Lord. Really? And the Lord oh, had restored wonderful. her. But, you know, what, what happens when you lose your self-respect? Yeah. You talk right. about in the book, <clears throat> we've got about two minutes left, setting boundaries. In fact, he was pretty popular, and he was walking with this beautiful girl and walking home with her, and she tells him, my parents just got a new waterbed. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You want to come in and look at it. <laughs> and he's not getting what she's talking about. <laughs> totally. Yeah, you just totally missed that one, didn't you? Yeah, I totally didn't have any clue what she's talking about. Because you couldn't believe that this girl was asking you, come on, let's go have sex. Yeah. Uh, it was the first time. I mean, I just asked her out that day. So we get to her house, and she says, you know, would you like to, uh, you know, would you like to come in the house? And I'm like, hmm. She says, well, my parents got a new waterbed. And when she said that, I realized she was trying to get me to sleep with her and I'm st- we're standing at the front porch and I I don't know what to say you know I, uh, I don't know what to say I'm 16 years old and I'm standing there and so <laughs> I, I turn around and I run <laughs> I took off running and I run all the way I, I walked her two miles you really resisted like the devil Joseph. There. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you but, just left again you know here I am I'm not a believer yet you know but I turn around and I run all the way home four miles and then I cut school for a week because I couldn't bear seeing her. <laughs> yeah, she yeah. was the she was the. Head She's going to tell everybody oh. that that I gave this guy a chance and he walked. And, he must be gay. And, my, and in my mind, my my brain is going, "What are you doing? Are you yeah. crazy? You get to sleep with the most popular girl in school, and everyone's going to think you're a nerd." And and uh, but I'll tell you something. Wow. Uh, you know, a year later, I was glad I that I did that. Because his mom turned to him and said, Son, now this is the marrying kind. And you found that the wonderful... Woman of my dreams. You're going to have to get your copy because there's the website up there. But we have about less than a minute. Share Christ with somebody watching. But yeah. Acts 30 seconds? 30 seconds. You know, what I want to say is this. If you've lost your virginity, if you've lost the battle, uh, the, the book ends with a great story about Grace, a girl Amen. named Grace, who Amen. God restored her virginity. He restored her hymen. He restored her physically. He restored her emotionally. He restored her spir- spiritually. And, and I want to say this. Like, there is hope. Thank God that with God, there's, nothing's impossible. That's right. That's and right. so if you've lost the battle of your virginity, God can give it back to you, and He can give you something to fight for. Amen. And I just release that on you in the name of Jesus, that if you're watching and you're like, I have failed, I want to say to you, God wants to restore you in Amen. Jesus' name. There's your copy. Get a copy. God bless. Bye-bye.